Hello everybody and welcome to the Brog episode 87. My name's Adam Josh and welcome to my show. I have a few minutes and I figured I would just say something that's been on my mind. Uh, how I'd like to explain uh, extrasensory perception and feeling things, uh, precognition and all that from a sort of scientific, real, easy to understand point of view. Now, one way we can do this uh, is by thinking of the words that you speak and the things that come out of your heart as water or as liquid. So, like, when people talk, I mean, I'm using air, but air, as you know, has the same uh, molecules in it uh, as uh, water does, uh, shares some similar properties. And on a real thick day, you know, you feel like you're swimming. So there is parts to air that can be the same as, like, almost like water. Now, uh, dolphins and, and whales, when they're underground, they can con communicate to each other over long distances. And, you know, I'd like to think that in, in, in some ways we're more advanced than dolphins and whales. I think uh, you can agree with me on that. So there's a part of this communication, echolocation, long distance location, long distance communication, uh, that we have forgotten, maybe because we're so into the left brain uh, world of everything's rigid and structured and everything's separate. But as we find out, as we're finding out uh, now through studies of physics and you know the Large Hadron Collider, we're finding out that the empty space isn't empty. There's lots of stuff in between that connects us all together. If you're standing on the moon and looking back at Earth, you'd have to include the Earth and everything else in the definition of the universe. So in that context, we are all one already, although we've already we've long for, since forgotten. But people are starting to remember. As I was saying, imagine for a second, use your power of your imagination. If not, fire it up and get it going. That when I'm speaking, you're, you're instead of uh, waves, you're, you're, you're taking in liquid waves, you know, like actual waves on water. So then instead of instead of um, hearing, you'd be like, you'd be tasting my words. You know, they say in the Bible, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, you can like feel out when people are talking and feel where they're coming from. Like you're, you're tasting their words, you're discern, discerning their words, right? So when I'm speaking to you, you could say like, I'm speaking life and truth. I'm not out to deceive anybody. I'm not making any money from these videos. I'm doing this on my own time, and my time is running out. So, um, imagine that, okay? So that when we talk to each other, we're communicating in liquid, in some sort of liquid instead of air that was coming out. You, the actual sound waves translated into actual waves, and you're hearing it in your heart, and you're discerning what I'm saying, and you're feeling it. Okay, now take that concept, you know, add it in if you're in your mind with dolphins and whales if it's getting confusing and how they communicate over long distances. Now, take big events in time, like a gigantic rock, and splash it down in the middle of the fabric of space-time, or what we would call reality or time, or whatever you want to call it. Now, splash that big event, like say a death in the family or something significant that's going to happen in your life. Splash that into the fabric of your life. And now what's going to happen is that's going to make waves, right? Now, because we don't perceive time in our limited minds, in like th in uh, fourth dimensional, five dimensional, we aren't perceiving all things at once. We're perceiving things on a linear time. So now take that wave and now slice it or take your view of it and turn it down the middle. So what you would see is an event and then the waves coming forward and the waves coming afterwards. So, a horrible example, but take, you know, 9-11, for example. Some people knew that something was going to happen. They didn't know how they knew, but they could feel something. Maybe some people were warned. Maybe some people just had bad vibes not to go into the towers that day or whatever. And then, of course, afterwards, we all felt the wake of sorrow and frustration and anger and everything that came afterwards. So that was a, an event in time that had um, a ripple effect in both directions through linear time because we don't perceive time all at once, all the time, like we're stuck in this linear time of I'm born and I die, I'm old and I'm, I'm old and then I, you know, I was young and then I'm old. So, maybe that helps you understand extrasensory perception. So, people who have extrasensory perception or ESP or precogs or empaths, what they're literally doing is just feeling and discerning those waves of events in life that maybe some people aren't just attuned to. So the other day when I dreamt about the exact color 
uh, of Matthew Good's tour bus, and then I went to the concert, which I didn't expect myself to go to, and then I find out the, that the, the tour bus is the, is the exact same color of my dream. Some people would say, well, how did you do that? Well, it's not that I was doing anything. I, I dreamt about it, so maybe I'm a little bit more sensitive and I meditate a bit more than the average person. More so than anything, I'm open to it. I'm open to the fact that there's more to reality than just bricks and mortar. I don't think I would have got this far in my artistic musical ability if I would have thought that everything's just brick and mortar. Some people would say, well, I can just... I can, I can just play guitar, that's it. You know, but I can play drums, I can play keyboards. I mean, you can do, heat yourself to do anything. That's the unlimited mind. I, I can do anything I put my mind to. So, my point is, extra, sex and extra sensory perception could be simplified as saying that when you drop in a big event into the sea or the ocean of time, it's going to create ripple waves in every direction. And the sensitive can pick up those waves and those vibes before the event actually occurs. Then the event occurs and then we all go to what everybody else can see, which would be the aftershocks or the after ripple waves of the event. So, taste and see what's going on around you. Don't just limit yourself to your ears and your eyeballs, but feel people when they talk to you. Look in their eyes and, and, and gain this lost art of communication that we have used to have. I don't know what happened, but we used to have this and now it's gone and, you know, should uh, mainstream media and uh, drug companies have their way, I'm sure we'd all just be like, you know, I work my job, I go to the school and this is my life and there's nothing else and I just die and blah, blah, blah. You know, powerless, life is bricks and mortar and everything is separate and you're over there and I'm over here. Well, how is it that I can feel people from across the world when they're thinking about my music or when they're watching my videos. I can literally feel it. I've taken pictures of my heart and it's actually like I've taken a picture of my heart like the whole chest area is literally like on fire like it's like I've taken pictures of it red all red around and people say oh you just sat there and made it red. Well believe whatever you want to believe but I'm not I'm not getting paid to do this. I'm not lying to you. I have no reason to lie and I have to go. So that's the brog. Uh, we're at episode 87 and this was called demystifying extrasensory perception. All right, take care. That was easy. What's your favorite website, guys? AdamJosh.com. <laughs>